Central Utah Boys Mass High School Basketball Tournament. It's time now for your starting lineup. You can start with the visiting team, the San Juan Broncos. Coming in at number 13, Jay Palmer. Number 55, Jensen Grabber. Yeah, big win for San Juan as we're getting the starters already called here now. So for San Juan, it's going to be number 13, 6'1 junior guard Jace Palmer. Number 55 always uh, signals the crowd, 6'0 junior guard Jensen Grover. Number 10, 6'6 senior center Nate Grover. Number 3, 5'8 junior guard Lad Ivins. And it'll be number 1, 6'3 junior guard Cooper Black. Sam Juan is the visiting team today, so wearing road blue. And now for the Manti Templar starters, it'll be number 4, senior Grady Thompson. Number 23, senior Tanner Justison. Number three, senior Trace Boggess. Number five, senior Braden Boggess. And number one this afternoon, guess what? Another senior, Austin Cox. So five seniors out on the floor for this Manti Templar squad. Five juniors on the floor for the San Juan Broncos. And we are set to go in what should be a fun matchup to close out our coverage at the Central Utah Boys Basketball Preview here this afternoon at the Sevier Valley Center in Richfield. We are glad you've joined us. San Juan looking to open the year 2-0 as the players exchange uh, some comments together at midcourt. It's going to be Nate Grover tipping against Grady Thompson. Referees, I think, are stowing their masks over here and getting set to toss up the opening tip. So here we go, Grover versus Thompson, and Manti has the edge to start. And they will control down to the right side as Grady Thompson loses it over here on the near side. San Juan was an aggressive D, excuse me. Jensen Grover tried to save that from going out of bounds and steal, but Enterprise, or sorry, Manti will get a chance to reset as it went out of bounds right in front of the Templar players bench. Now on a little crossover dribble, it's Thompson trying to penetrate. trade. He'll kick it back out to Cox. And now over to the right wing and driving in is Justison. Now kicking left corner three for Cox. Yes. And it's a three to nothing open for Manti. Boy, the speed already here pretty evident in this game as Jensen Grover takes a hit going to the basket. I think he ran into Nate Grover on that attempt and not able to get that to go. And now Manti coming the other way. They'll kick out for a three again. This one is tipped away on the rebound. It doesn't go. Grady Thompson misses the shot. And now San Juan turns it over in transition. And very quickly back in is Thompson. He'll spin away from the D. Now a nice little handoff, but San Juan was there to knock it away. And the Broncos run the floor. Jace Palmer coming down. He runs into traffic, loses the ball. Now he grabs it on the floor, and he'll be called. Well, it'll be a jump ball. I thought he was traveling with that, but he's a little ginger getting up. And San Juan, it looks like, will retain here on alternating possession. 6.52 to go in the opening frame. And the Broncos still looking for their first points down three to nothing. A three-point basket for Austin Cox is all we've seen offensively so far in this game for Manti. And now Cooper Black has it top of the key. Goes around the D, goes to the hole, draws a foul, can't make the shot, but he will go to the line. A nice play by Cooper Black as he cranks up the speed and he'll go to the line. Yeah, a lot of aggressive offensive play out there on both sides. This is a fast-paced game compared to the last game this year. And the first foul of the afternoon goes to Tanner Justison for Manti. Cooper Black trying to get San Juan on the board and nothing but net here. So that makes it three to one. And Black will toe the line, set for his second shot, trying to pull San Juan back to within one point. With 6.40 to go in the first quarter, and he does. So Black has two, San Juan has two, and Manti's lead is three to two as a long range three, college three for Austin Cox is good. And I guess you're not gonna be able to leave this kid open anywhere. Six points now on two threes and that's all of Manti's offense. Cooper Black can't make a finger roll go on the run and 
Nate Grover missed on a follow-up, and now Manti quickly back underneath the basket the other way. Here comes another Austin Cox three. This one bounces off, but Manti tracks down the rebound, and they'll go cross court. Now just to the right of the top of the key, and Tanner Justison hits a three. Boy, this is a dangerous offense for Manti. And here comes Cooper Black slowly across the line for San Juan. Nice little pass into Jace Palmer, but he can't handle it. Manti will take it away. And running the court for the easy lay-in is Tanner Justice, and he had a little pressure at the end from big Nate Grover, but Grover just a tick late arriving. And Manti has gone up by nine here in this first quarter. I think the scoreboard is uh, a bit confused here. There now they're starting to fix it as Cooper Black throws up a three from the left wing, no good. And now San Juan steals as Enterprise, or sorry, Manti loses it in transition, but the Broncos will throw it away coming back the other way. Intercepted by Thompson. Manti in transition and a nice little layup right side for Trace Bogus and an 11 point lead for the Manti Templars as San Juan is going to call a time out to regroup here here in the early stages. 5-0-1 remaining in the opening quarter and Manti has jumped out to the 13-2 lead. Our broadcast of high school hoops at the Central Utah Boys Basketball Preview on Red Rock 92 and picture at Palmer.com is now Black gets the long arms in the way there to take it away from Manti and San Juan has an opportunity as Landon, or Lad Ivans goes down hard here, he draws a foul and will shoot two again. This is going to be on Kaysen Douglas, his first of the afternoon, and Manti has all three of the fouls here in the first half now, as Ivans goes to the line for his second trip, and the first one bounces in. <coughs> hey, if this ever goes black, Make sure it comes back on because uh, it'll disconnect us. All right, Lad Ivan's second shot on the way is good as well. And so San Juan pulls to within eight points. 18 to 10 the score. Manti in transition. And the Broncos are able to knock it away and down the floor they come. Cooper Black can't get the finger roll to go though. And we get a whistle here. And the foul here going to be called against San Juan. At 3.04 remaining in the first quarter, it's Nate, let's see, Nate Grover's first of the afternoon, and that is San Juan's first on the day. It's Lad Ivins is who got fouled. Oh, Lad Ivins. Okay, sorry about that. So. So now San Juan steals and has it stolen, stripped away, going out of bounds, but I don't think there's a foul here. I think this ball just goes out of bounds off Manti. So San Juan will keep it here. And they will inbound in the offensive end. 2.52 to go. Now we will get a foul. And this will be on number one, Austin Cox. That'll be his first. Manti's fourth. And Jensen Grover set to inbound to Lad Ivins, gets a tap back right back from Ivins, and now Grover goes to the hole, has his first shot blocked, second one goes off the side of the rim, and quickly Manti headed the other way. And the Templars will back it out to the right corner, now go all the way cross court, stepping into the paint, trying to pass that through traffic, was Trace Bogus, but it doesn't go. And it goes out of bounds over here on the near side. And it looks like off San Juan, so Manti will keep it and they'll reset here in the offensive end. And the Broncos will actually take it away here and steal. And now in transition, the San Juan will draw a foul. And this will be on number three, Trace Bogus for Manti. That is his first of the afternoon, and Manti already up to five here in this first quarter. Still two and a half minutes remaining in the first frame. 
So the Broncos will reset on the far side, trailing by eight here. It's 18 to 10. Again, 2.30 remaining in this first quarter of play. The Broncos have the basketball in the offensive end. Cooper Black controlling. Crossover dribble, gets a little penetration, knocks it back out to Lad Ivins, who hits the three. And that pulls San Juan back to within five. A little bit uh, closer here now. And now a good steal back in the defensive end by Cooper Black. He spots Lad Ivins driving the basket, but Ivins got in too deep. Now they'll swing it back around. A Jaden Black three, yes. And And just like last night in the fourth quarter, a little bit of defense heats up the shooting offensively for San Juan. Back-to-back -back threes, and the Broncos right back in this one now, just down by two. It seems like the Broncos are really shutting down the man passing lanes and picking off a lot of passes. Hard fought down on the offensive side of the court, and you start to get those points. Makes it a very tight game. Yeah, Sam one's starting to collapse that D down into the middle underneath the basket and not giving Manti a whole lot of looks through the middle. So it is working so far. I've noticed Sam one starting to throw in a little press as well. That's going to be tough to maintain against a team as speedy as this Manti squad. We are brought to you this afternoon from the Sevier Valley Center at the Central Utah Boys Basketball Preview on Red Rock 92 in part by Diamond Propane, the only locally owned and operated propane dealer in San Juan County. Also this afternoon, Precision Rehab, providing physical therapy in Monticello, Blanding, Monument Valley, and Montezuma Creek, and helping athletes of all ages get back in the game since 1996. Also this afternoon, San Juan Health, proud to sponsor broadcasts of high school sports on Red Rock 92. San Juan Health operates the San Juan Hospital and clinics in Monticello and Blanding. As Manti will inbound with 1.55 now to go in this opening quarter, the Templars lead has been reduced to two by some strong play by San Juan in the last couple minutes. And the Broncos a lot more aggressive to the ball here you can see and it will result in a foul this time as Jace Palmer reaches in. That'll be Palmer's first of the afternoon. San Juan's second on the day. As we're down to 1.43 to go in the opening quarter. And Manti tries to go up over the top of Nate Grover to get the ball in. And that was a mistake as Grover went up to grab that. But San Juan loses the ball in the offensive end. And now Manti will chuck it all the way downfield. But that ball is mishandled in the corner and out of bounds off Braden Bogus. So that will give it right back to San Juan as the two teams trade three turnovers. And now walking it across for San Juan as Cooper Black goes down into the corner to Ivans. Drives into the paint. He was getting a lot of push from a uh, defender there. That's number 11, Larson Progreski. And he will be called for his second foul of the afternoon on the lean-in. And with a minute 18 remaining in the first frame, now Manti up to six fouls here in this ballgame. And San Juan will reset from the offensive baseline. Lad Ivins got blatantly open left of the basket, but missed an easy layup. And Manti comes the other way, and that's a tough one. You need to have that against the defending 3A champs. Oh, now San Juan calling. I think all five players and all the coaches were signaling travel, but it's going to be a foul on San Juan here as Nate Grover called for his first. A lot of extra refs on that play. And Manti will reset here in the front court. Brady Thompson dribbling with the left hand out to the midcourt paint. Down under a minute to go now in the opening frame. And Manti, who led by, I can't remember what their lead was up to, but it was 18 to 4. So it was a 14 point lead, and it's been reduced to two as they miss a shot right here. That was Grady Thompson, I think, for three. Cooper Black comes down court and is not able to get a layup, and in transition is Manti as it opens up a bit. But now Grady Thompson will back it out. A little drive here from Douglas, but he'll kick it back out. Grady Thompson's shot is swatted by San Juan. Lad Ivins on the run, gives back to Nate Grover, who ran up under the basket, had the ball go off the front side of the rim. And so the team's trading missed opportunities here over the course of the last 45 seconds or so. And now Manti will slow it up and will look for one final shot to close out the quarter. Early December missed layups. <laughs> 
And so Manti now looking to make a play. They'll bounce it down in traffic. It's going to be grabbed a hold up down there by Jaden Black. He forces the jump ball as he wrestles with Braden Bogus. Jump ball. And it will be San Juan ball, so they have one second to inbound and get a shot from the backcourt here. <coughs> and Nate Grover, a late sub here for San Juan. Oh, no, this is going to be Manti's basketball, they say. So Manti could be whistled for delay a game here. Going completely down to the other. Yeah, it's like they were headed into their huddle for the break between the quarters. So one second to go. Manti has a better shot or better opportunity to get a shot here inbounding in the front court. They do get it to, wow, what a shot that was. Grady Thompson. Oh, they're going to call a foul on San Juan here on the shot. So Thompson will have a free opportunity here after the buzzer to score some points. Coach Black is having a heart-to-heart -heart with the official who called that foul against Nathan Grover earlier and then just called that one. So that was Ladd Ivan's second after the buzzer at the end of the first quarter. And no surprise, Grady Thompson makes the first. He'll drain the second. So he's got five in that first quarter. Oh, he gets three. That's right. This yeah, was a three-point three. shot. So. This is really a pretty significant call right there. You have one second left in the quarter, not enough time to really set up anything, and Manti gets three points out of it. I think Ladd had an argument there. He just stood there with his hands straight up. So, But at any rate, that's how the quarter comes to a close. 21 to 16 is the lead for the Manti Templars, a five-point deficit for San Juan. As we head into the second quarter of play, we're glad you've joined us. It's High School Hoops on Red Rock 92. We are at 92.7 on your radio dial. We're also streaming over Picture It Palmer Dot com this afternoon for video and audio and then we've also got the streaming audio 24 7 at redrock92.com so you can listen in a variety of ways this afternoon this is our fourth and final broadcast of this weekend here at the Sevier Valley Center both the San Juan County boys basketball teams in action this weekend at this preview and for Monticello, it was a couple losses to open the season versus Canab yesterday at, uh, versus Enterprise. In the first game you heard this afternoon, San Juan won an exciting comeback fashion over North Summit last night and then are attempting to do the same thing against Manti here this afternoon. And apparently their method is, well, it's not, Coach Black said he didn't like it, he doesn't want to do this all year, but it seems like their plan is to let teams lead all game long and then just score enough to get the lead with 20 seconds left in the game, I think. Yeah, that was a uh, just a big start by Manti and then a just as impressive comeback by San Juan. So they're right in it as we start the second quarter, but three points from the free throw line there after the buzzer help Manti's cause. They're up by five again as San Juan has possession to start the second frame. Lad Ivan's three bounces off, rebounded by Jace Palmer though, and he gets the put back to fall. That was a really nice rebound. Strong hands by Palmer. Carrying it back in for Manti is Thompson. He'll back it out to the midcourt paint. Cooper Black defending him. Now Black will back away. They'll go left wing now for Justison. He's working on Cooper Black again. Now they'll go right corner again to Thompson. To the top of the key, Bogus drives in, kicks it out, and a travel will be called against Tanner Justison. That'll turn it back over to San Juan, and the Broncos could tie with a three. We haven't had a tie ball game in this one since the clock read 8-0-0 to start. San Juan will set it up. Cooper Black out high on the left wing. Crosses over, gets distance, and hits the three. Wow, nice shot for Cooper Black to tie it up. Made a move on his man, and boy, just uh, left Tanner Justison in the dust without going forward. Now Manti will set it up. A paint drive to the bucket, and it's Tanner Justison who redeems himself a little bit there, scoring for Manti. And actually, I think uh, it may have been number three, Trace Bogus, who Cooper Black beat here. 
Now San Juan gets to the baseline. Lad Ivins kicks out for Jensen Grover. A three bounces off. Rebounded by Manti, and the Templars on the run, but big Cooper Black gets up in the air to knock that away. However, it bounces to Thompson, who puts up a two, no good. Rebounded, kicked out for three, Bogus, yes. And it's 26-21, back-to-back buckets for the Templars. We were tied at 21, but Manti grabbing a little bit of that momentum back now. Six minutes to go in the first half. And the Broncos with it in the offensive end. There's Nate Grover backing into the basket. Can't get the hook to go. And it's thrown out ahead for Manti. Nice little jump to make the San Juan defender Jensen Grover miss. And then laying it up and in is Braden Bogus. That's his first bucket of the afternoon. All five starters on the score sheet now for Manti. And it's 28-21. So just like yesterday, San Juan is able to tie. Although yesterday they briefly held leads, but not for very long. Here today they can't seem to get the lead on Manti. And now Jensen Grover is going to get a trip to the line here as he draws a foul on Braden Bogus. Well, they scratch back from a very deep hole in order to tie the game, and then boom, Manti scores seven straight. Almost like Manti's teasing the Broncos here, but we know for sure this Bronco squad has fight and they won't say quit for the entire game. So unfortunately for San Juan, Jensen Grover misses the front end here. And he will have one more shot, a two-shot situation. Second one is up and nothing but net. That is Grover's first point of the afternoon. It makes it 28-22 in favor of Manti. Now a foul against the Broncos here underneath the basket. And it's fresh off the bench. Easton Bethay will be called for his first of the afternoon. Easton Bethay, second. At the line to Manti, number four. Manti will go to the line. Once again, this is Grady Thompson taking the trip. And he will drain the first. He's, I think, perfect from the line this afternoon. Yeah, four of four now. I knew that I could jinx yeah. it. So he misses his second. I'll keep talking about that. <laughs> and that makes it 29-22. Here's a long range three from Cooper Black that bounces off. Manti grabs the board and then quick transition right to the bucket. Missing the shot was Cox. They battle for the rebound. It goes out of bounds. And it will stay with Manti here with 5.02 to go in the half and a 29-22 lead for the Templars. And they'll float it in here out high. Now right wing, a little tap pass. Now back to Austin Cox for three. Yes. He scored a couple threes early in the game. We haven't heard from him in a while, but he got an open look there, and he doesn't seem to make a mistake if he's open. Cooper Black on the right side now. Hands off to Jensen Grover. It's a 10-point lead now for Manti as they've wrestled all this momentum back, but Jensen Grover helps San Juan answer with his first field goal of the day. It's 32-24. Nice play by Grover on the right baseline, and now a little crossover action from Thompson. Can't penetrate, but he'll get a return pass. A three is no good. They battle for the rebound, and it bounces to Manti. Now a wide open three for Bogus falls off. And rebounded by San Juan. Grover on the run. He'll pull up, top of the key. Now drives, he's fouled, he'll shoot two. That was nice, a little hesitation, and then drove. It was uh, fouled, get two shots. Nice play by Jensen. This will be Jensen's second trip in a row. First foul of the afternoon on Grady Thompson for Manti. But the Templars now up to eight in this first half, so Sam Juan already in the bonus, and just like his first trip, Grover misses his first foul shot. So it remains an eight-point game, 32-24. 4 7 left in the first half. San Juan down 32-25 now as Grover hits the second of two. Manti will walk it up. Brady Thompson goes right side for Justison. He'll drive in. Now kick out into the left corner. Austin Cox, three, nothing but net. Boy, he's so dangerous from outside. He's got a game high 12 now. 
Back-to-back -back threes for the Manti senior. Jace Palmer, a little careless with that dribble, has it stolen away. Manti in transition. Now they'll swing it out high to the left corner. Back to the wing for three, and Trace Bacchus rims one in. Wow, 13-point lead for the Templars. They really turned it on after. And a lot of three, a lot of three-point baskets here so far in the last couple minutes. Now they get a quick Tanner Justison out ahead of the D, and he'll lay one in easily for the Templars, who now have a 15-point lead, and they've gone on a bit of a run here. Still 3:05 to go in the first half, though. And now driving into the paint, floating up a shot. No good as Grover, but he does draw a foul. He'll go to the line. This will be the second on Braden Bogus. Manti started the game with an 18-4 run, and they're on in the middle of a 19-4 run. Yeah, so it's definitely been streaky. San Juan battled back, but have allowed Manti to get all the momentum that they had erased right back. And in fact, uh, biggest lead of the game right now for the Templars at 15. And so Grover will go to the line for two, looking for his first points of the afternoon. And he does get on the board here on the front end. This is a one and one, I guess the foul was on the floor. So Grover does earn a second shot. This one falls off though, it bounces off. And Grover one of two on his first trip. It's 40 to 26 in favor of Manti. The Templars draw a foul on Jensen Grover. As he reached in from behind, that'll be his first of the day. San Juan now with six in this first half. And the Templars will inbound from the far sideline. It's Kaysen Douglas standing over there, and he'll get it in to Trace Bogus. Bogus in the midcourt paint on the dribble. Hands off to Thompson right wing. 2.45 to go in the first half and a 14-point lead for the defending 3A champs. Out of the corner once again is Austin Cox with another three. He's got a game-high 15. I think he's five for five, too. I can't remember a miss that he's had from three. He is five of six, so he did miss one. I think it was a straightaway in the first quarter. Yeah, it's, he's been impressive, that's for sure. Jaden Black now had his foot on the arc and misses the shot anyway. And it's rebounded by Manti. I don't think San Juan is doing too well in the rebound department here. It's Cox again for two on the layup. Cox with the layup, thank you, Bill. And so he was underneath. And now he's adding two point baskets to his threes as Coach Black is gonna call a timeout for San Juan. The Broncos have fallen down by 19 here in this first half as we are in the last couple minutes of the second quarter. We are glad you've joined us. It is High School Hoops on Red Rock 92. We've got a timeout on the floor, and we'll just let, take this time to let you know that we are brought to you in part all weekend long by Anderson Oliver Title with offices in San Juan and Grand Counties. Anderson Oliver has provided title insurance and real estate closing services for over 20 years. Also this afternoon, primary residential mortgage with offices in Blanding and Moab and licensed in Utah and Colorado. They are offering plenty of options to purchase a home or refinance your mortgage. San Juan Pharmacy, a longtime supporter of local sports and a pillar in the community. And San Juan Building Supply, an innovative lumber and building material supplier in Blanding, offering competitive prices, quality merchandise, and superior service. So yeah, they are, Manti is looking like the defending 3A champions this afternoon, that's for sure. I would have liked to have gotten a chance to see, I saw a couple minutes of that Manti Grantsville game yesterday, according to what Coach Black for San Juan was telling me, uh, Manti just wasn't uh, very aggressive with the ball in the first half, but they came on in the second half and were able to eke out that win, which I'm not sure was an upset. So Manti and Grantsville both gonna be very tough in the 3A ranks this year. From what we can tell. San Juan with it here as we start after the timeout and some nice work by Nate Grover to get a little five footer off the glass to fall. And San Juan cuts into this lead a little bit, but now able to get away from the defense is Trace Bogus, but he misses an easy layup. That's a real break for San Juan, but the Broncos lose the ball after they got the rebound. 
And so that will turn it right back over and give Manti another shot in the offensive end. And those are the type of mistakes you cannot afford against a team as good as this Manti squad is. There's a nice dribble, a shot block, but they're going to say a foul against Nate Grover here. And that will put Trace Bogus to the line. Foul on number 10, Nathan Grover is second. At the line for Manti, number I like how they're calling Nate Nathan in here all weekend. Tanner Justison. So from the line, it'll be actually Tanner Justison. I thought it was going to be Trace Bogus. He'll drain the first. And that increases it back to an 18-point lead here, 46-28. Second one is off. And San Juan will have a chance to hold it within 16 on this possession, maybe 15. If this falls, and it does, a straightaway three for Jensen Grover. He's got seven now. That's a tie for the San Juan lead with both Cooper Black and Lad Ivins. And the Broncos back in business a bit, down by 15. 1.10 to go in the first half now as Tanner Justison gets a good drive but loses the handle as they toss it back out high. That'll be a backcourt violation on the Templars San Juan basketball. And Jensen Grover will step to the far sideline to inbound this ball. Well, in a game of momentum swings, I hope we're, we're looking at a momentum swing here and let San Juan close this anti lead here in the first half. They'll go down underneath to Grover, and he gets a little spin-around shot to go. That was a good play for San Juan, who have now scored five unanswered, and now they'll steal. Looking to swing this momentum, like you said, but they turn it over at midcourt. And Manti back the other way. Boy, there's a real good dribble to the left, a look-off play, and then a hand back the other way to Tanner Justison. And that was a beautiful play there as uh, they pass it in and Justison had an easy layup as he had gotten through the San Juan D. Now a finger roll driving through the paint for Nate Grover doesn't go, but a putback try will go and who scores that? It's Black. Jaden Black on the shot for San Juan. He has five on the afternoon now and that makes it 48-35. San Juan within 13, but we're in the final 10 seconds here of the first half. And Manti trying to get the last shot. A little crossover by Grady Thompson. He'll pull away from Grover for a long three. No. Rebound to San Juan. No shot after the buzzer. And that's 16 minutes in the books. And a 13-point lead for the defending 3A champion, Manti Templars over the San Juan Broncos. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back out here for first half stats. Stay with us. You're listening to High School Hoops on Red Rock 92. Thanks very much, ma'am. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Rhett Sifford welcoming you back live to the Sevier Valley Center in Richfield, Utah. It is halftime here in game number two, actually, this afternoon, game number four of our entire weekend of broadcasts as we've had a couple Monticello games and we've had the Bland San Juan game last night and now San Juan finishing up our coverage of San Juan County Schools 
here at the Central Utah Boys Basketball Preview in Richfield at the beautiful Sevier Valley Center, which is largely empty this weekend due to COVID-19 restrictions. Only parents of players are able to come in and see games at this point until those restrictions are either relaxed or lifted. But we do have some first half stats for you with a pretty impressive first half for Manti, shooting the lights out in this one, leading San Juan 48 to 35 through 16 minutes of play. And we will start with team stats. For Manti, at 17 of 27 from the floor, 63%. Both teams with 27 shots in that first half. San Juan making just 11 of their attempts. So they're shooting 41%, and they'll look to improve that as the game goes along. Here's the real stat from three-point range. Manti is 9 of 15 in the first half, 60% shooting and 15 shots from beyond the arc. San Juan is 4 of 8 for 50% from, from long range, I was trying to say. From the free throw line, Manti uh, 5 of 7, 71%, and San Juan 9 of 12 for 75%. Individually, it's really... Well, both two players, Tanner, excuse me, Austin Cox and Tanner Justison, just amazing for San Juan. Uh, Austin Cox, six of eight. Tanner Justison, a perfect five of five. But the real deal is the three-point shooting of Austin Cox. He's five of six from beyond the arc in that first half of play. Total points-wise, obviously Cox leads the way for all scorers with 17 through the first couple quarters. Tanner Justinson is, help, Justinson is helping him out very well with 12 points. Uh, eight points for Trace Boggess through the first half of play. Grady Thompson has seven and two apiece for Braden Boggess and Larson Progreski. For San Juan, it is Cooper Black. Well, let's see, it's actually Jensen Grover leading the way with nine points. He scored one late in that second quarter. Then Cooper Black and Lad Ivins both with seven apiece. Jaden Black has five, Jace Palmer with four points, and Nate Grover with three in the first half. And rebound-wise, uh, according to the stats from Brad James of the Mid-Utah Radio Group, Manti leading in that, in that department 16 to 11, and I would say that's at least accurate, if not worse, for San Juan. Manti has been very strong on the boards through the first half of play. San Juan's got to improve in that department, that's for sure, if they want to have a chance to de defeat the 3A uh, defending state champions. Individually for San Juan, it's Cooper Black, two of seven field goal wise in that first half. Lad Ivins, one of three. Nate Grover, one of four. Jace Palmer is two of three, Jensen Grover three of seven so far, and Jaden Black is two of three. So that's your first half statistics in this ball game. It is our fourth and final broadcast here at the Central Utah Boys Basketball Preview with San Juan trailing Manti, 48 to 35. Stay with us, we'll be back out here to the Sevier Valley Center in just a couple minutes. You're listening to High School Hoops on Red Rock 92.
hope you'll uh, join us as we go through. Uh, we're going to do as many broadcasts all over our uh, different platforms as we can, covering San Juan High School sports. We're going to be on Red Rock 92.7 FM, redrock92.com, and at pictureitpalmer.com as well for video and audio. And so we hope you'll join us some way, somehow, as the season goes along. And obviously we're hoping as it does go along that we'll get a chance to have more folks start showing up at the games and we'll hear some louder crowds and less of an echo of our voice in these empty gymnasiums. Yeah, talking with Coach Black after that impressive comeback last night, he said his kids are convinced that if they're down by 10 or 12, they're always in the game. He wants to get them to the point where they believe they're in it if they're down 16 and 18, but he doesn't want them to play like that all year, that's for sure. But boy, Manti picking up where they left off, scoring immediately as we start the second half. Tanner Justinson getting open underneath the basket, laying it in off the glass, and Sam Juan down by 15. 50 to 35 as Cooper Black bounces his way in to the baseline and that one rolls in and out a couple times before falling off. And that's a tough break for San Juan. And And Manti gets it set up, and they get an open look for three from the left wing for Braden Bogus. Make it 53 to 35 as Manti continues to pour it on here, up by 18. Now Cooper Black on some nice running into the paint. I think we have to remember, Bill, this is seniors versus juniors here. It's a lot like the football matchup this year between San Juan and Juab, and I don't know if uh, if they'll get that rematch next year with San Juan possibly moving back down to 2A, but you'd like to see them schedule that game anyway and get a chance for San Juan to get their seniors on the football field against Juab's juniors. It's a lot like this one here, seniors versus juniors. Well, Sam Juan is going to, I think this is going to count. I didn't see a signal, but a foul here will put, say, they will count the basket. So good play by Lad Ivan's a score here and a chance at a three-point play. Sam Juan needs as many of these as they can collect, that's for sure. As uh, Braden Bogus now guilty of a foul. That's his third of the afternoon, and Ivans does complete the three-point play. So Sam Juan back to within 15. Manti on the run, though. Now they'll kick it back out. Boy, they're just so good at penetrating and then kicking out for a three. There's a beautiful little crossover, and Grady Thompson beat two San Juan defenders, goes to the hole, lays it in. Impressive dribbling there. That's Coach Black was talking about his ability, uh, or these Manti players' ability to just uh, have, it's almost like a pitcher who has six different pitches. The way they slow up their dribbles, change their dribble style, and uh, just are able to uh, make guys miss like that. 
as Cooper Black will drive the paint high off the glass and good. Nice play by Cooper Black to drive through the D, but look at this Manti transition. Unable to make the shot here is Braden Bogus up underneath the basket, but now Lad Ivans goes tumbling down for San Juan on the run the other direction, and he'll draw another Manti foul. This will be on Trace Bogus, his second of the day. Manti has all three fouls now in the second half. San Juan is within 15. That's where we were after the first basket to start this second half. Jensen Grover lobs it up over the Manti defense to Cooper Black. Now they'll get it down under the basket. Bronson Snyder into the game for the first time today. Can't get the shot off the glass to go. They got that big body down underneath now, and now Manti's going to get a very friendly roll here. Count it and a foul, I think, coming on Cooper Black. Fouls on number one, Cooper Black, his first. At line, Manti, number three, Trace Bogus. Trace Bogus is the third Manti player now in double digit scoring, and Grady Thompson knocking on the door with nine. And Bogus is going to try to add one here. It's a 17 point lead for Manti as we stand. 57 to 40 with 5.43 to go in the third quarter. Shot falls off though, but Manti gets their own rebound. They can't get a put back from Grady Thompson. And San Juan gets the board. They'll bring it back into their offensive end. Jace Palmer with it out high. Now Lad Ivans on the left side. They tried to set a pick. It didn't really work, but Lad Ivans took it to the hole and scored anyway. And a foul. I said they'd like to collect as many of these as they can, and they may have heard me. Checking in for Manti, number 11, Clarkson Pabruski. At the line for San Juan, number three, Lad Ivans. Checking in for San Juan, number 10, Nathan Grover. We'll, we'll see if he can connect here and pull San Juan back to within 14. He does. The Bronco Junior has a team high 13 points now. And again on the crossover, Grady Thompson goes around the San Juan D and lays it up and in. So they answer back immediately, and it's a 16-point game, 59-43. Ivans lobs it up high for Jace Palmer, far side. Under the basket for Jensen Grover. It's knocked away by Tanner Justison of Manti, but out of bounds. So San Juan resets in the front court. 5.01 to go in the third quarter. A 59-43 lead for the defending 3A champion Manti Templars in this one. Here's... Nate Grover in the middle, spins away from his defender Cox, but can't get the shot to go. And Manti with a super quick transition again. They missed the first try, missed a second try. That's Progreski missing and then uh, Thompson missing. And now Jensen Grover having a battle at midcourt. He'll draw a foul on Thompson. That makes it five for Manti here in the second half. Sam Juan with just one. Jensen Grover will inbound from right in front of the scorer's table. And gets it to Cooper Black in the backcourt. He'll walk it across now. Dealing with the defense of Thompson. Now they'll go left wing. Jensen Grover, a quick turnaround three, no good. Lad Ivans there for the rebound and the putback though, on the run. And he's a big factor in San Juan staying in this game right now, although if Progreski has anything to say about it, San Juan won't stay in it. He drains a three, and Progreski now has five off the bench for the Templars. Meanwhile, Lad Ivans is up to 15 points for San Juan in the game. Cooper Black through traffic, floats it up, doesn't get the roll. It bounces back to him on the rebound, though. And San Juan can set it up. Lad Ivans a drive, left baseline, can't get the shot, but draws a foul. And this is going to be the third of the day on Progreski. At the line, number three, Lad Ivans. Lad Ivans has been impressive from the free throw line of late. 
on the day he is a perfect seven of seven. So they'll try to add to that right here. I'm, hopefully uh, that won't jinx him. And good, he broke the jinx. <laughs> I'm a hockey player, so of course I'm a suspicious person. Or that's not the right word, what is it? Superstitious, that's right. As Manti breaks the San Juan D, goes right in the middle. Tanner Justison finds some open room and hits a six footer. And it's 64 47. Boy, Manti has an answer every time for San Juan in this game. It's a Lad Ivan show for San Juan right now. He drives right through traffic again, through the paint, gets a right side layup. And he's up to 19. That is now a game high as he takes that over. Manti's Grady Thompson on the drive through the middle. He's fouled. And this will be on the floor. Sam Juan second in the half, and it's on Lad Ivans. He's doing everything. And unfortunately, that's his third on the afternoon. As Nate Grover comes out of the game for San Juan, and it looks like Easton Bethea is back in. Manti has the ball knocked away on the inbound pass. Off San Juan, out of bounds at midcourt. Now Preston Imlay is going to come in for his first varsity action this season. As he'll supplant Lad Ivans. Manti will get the ball in here. Working on the dribble. It is number 11, Progreski. He'll end up driving, but loses it out of bounds on the baseline. So San Juan will take the turnover. And with 2.55 to go in the third quarter, trailing Manti 64-49, they'll walk it up. Cooper Black has the dribble. Now he'll come to the right side. That is Jaden Black to Jensen Grover, out high again as he backs it up. Now to Imlay. Imlay left wing for Bethay. He's guarded tightly there by Justison. Now they'll give to Cooper Black on the run through the middle. Can't get the layup. And you want to have some of these baskets. Nice give and go down here for Manti as they beat it. They uh, execute a three on two perfectly. And it ends up going to Progreski on the last touch. He lays it up and in off the glass and it's 66-49. There's a three from Jensen Grover, no good. Rebounded by the Templars and they'll run it up. Now pulling up for three straight away. Grady Thompson, no. Rebound goes out of bounds baseline. And it'll be San Juan basketball with just over two minutes to go in the third. And the Broncos will bring Jace Palmer back in the game as Jensen Grover goes out. Big number 33 coming in for Manti, Christian Hansen. I believe it's his first time in the ball game. Again, just over two minutes left in this third quarter, a 66-40 lead for the defending 3A champs. Palmer will walk it up for San Juan. Works a little crossover, now sends it left wing for Black. Around to the right side, there's Imlay. Finds Jace Palmer inside, he's run into by Justison, and that'll be Justison's third foul of the afternoon. Seventh for Manti here in the second half already, so San Juan is in the bonus, they'll have to take advantage of that. Palmer will go to the line, this will be a one and one. Hey, one shot, right box. And it remains 66 to 49 as we stand. A minute 45 to go in the third quarter. Manti has led from the start in this one. San Juan tied it at 21, but that's as close as they've gotten. Jace Palmer drains the front end here, so he'll get another shot. And he does pull San Juan back to within 16, but a lot of work to do here in the last nine minutes, 45 seconds, that's for sure. Battling against the defending champions of 3A Utah High School boys basketball. Here is Manti bringing it into the offensive end. Look at Preston Imlay with the aggressive double team here. Now they will find Progreski open on the left side and he drains a three. Boy, this Manti team can shoot the long range ball. One twenty remaining now in the third, a 69-51 lead for Manti. As Jaden Black drives baseline left, doesn't get the layup. And the ball out of bounds off San Juan, back to Manti. 
And the Templars will walk it up. Now a technical foul is going to be called on San Juan. I think this is on an assistant coach here. Coach Black is standing there looking innocent. Technical <laughs> foul. So a technical foul on San Juan. We can hear all the conversations, that's for sure. I've heard some ugly ones this afternoon, not necessarily in our game. I, once I put on the headset, I'm uh, sheltered a little bit, so that's nice. So I think... Uh, how many shots went here? Is it a four-shot situation? There must have been a foul. I'm not sure what happened here. I think. Okay, so he made both of them. That's what happened. I didn't think coaches remembered bad calls. <laughs> Yeah, heart to heart, like you said. Well, at any rate, Manti makes San Juan pay with a couple foul shots. Now back-to-back -back misses for the Templars as they had the basketball. That's Progreski and uh, number 33 missing. I'll try to catch up to the play here as San Juan works it in the offensive end. Now a Jace Palmer three bounces off. And Lad Ivans, who else is there for the rebound? And now Cooper Black is fouled shooting three, so he'll go to the line. A three-shot situation. This will be on Dylan Christensen, the junior. I'm surprised to call a junior for Manti here. I didn't know they had any. thought this was a senior, complete senior squad here. Cooper Black is going to drain the first, two more forthcoming. That makes it 71-52, so... Yeah, second shot for Black rolls off. Right. Yeah, and of course, lots of turnover in high school sports. Black gets a friendly roll on the third try, so... He makes the front end and the back end, the middle. He left empty, 71 to 53 now for Manti as we wind down to the last half minute of the third quarter. Manti trying to break a defensive press here by San Juan. Jensen Grover knocks the ball away here. He thought it would go uh, San Juan's way, but Manti's gonna keep possession here in the front court. And it'll be Dylan Christensen set to inbound. He gets it into Progreski. Progreski, now San, San Juan double teaming the basketball all over the court. Boy, they're running to beat the band here, that's for sure. But uh, Manti's still going to get an open look out of the corner. Kaysen Douglas hits a two, and it's 70. Nope, I guess they're calling that a three. Kaysen Douglas on the three. Now San Juan's Cooper Black will draw a foul under the basket. Yeah, that is another three. That's Bell's on 33. Christian Hanson, his first. At the line, number one. He's going to go one and one, one and one here. That's the ninth foul. I have it as 10 on Manti, but I must have signaled a foul at some point when there wasn't. So Cooper Black shooting a one and one. I thought it was a one and one. Maybe it was during the shot. So he's shooting two at any rate. This is the front end here. They didn't scramble for the rebound, so everybody on the floor at least knew it was going to be two shots. And Cooper will tow the line again here. That one rims off as well, but he gets his own rebound. Drives baseline left, counted, and a foul. Good hustle by Cooper Black to not give up on that when he missed both foul shots, and he'll get a chance at a three-point play. Christensen's second foul for Manti. As we're starting to see a lot of new faces coming in now. And Cooper Black does complete the three-point play. That makes it 74-56.
with just four and a half seconds left and now Manti is going to call a timeout as they were having a tough time getting that ball in bounds and so with four and a half seconds left in the third quarter we've got a timeout on the floor we'll take it ourselves stay with us you're listening to high school hoops on four corners classic hits red rock 92. Good afternoon, Rhett Sifford and Bill Boyle welcoming you back live to the Sevier Valley Center in the center of the state of Utah, Richfield, Utah, where we are enjoying the Central Utah Boys Basketball High School preview. And today has been a tough one for our San Juan County schools. Uh, Monticello in the earlier game this afternoon, suffering a loss to the two A's number two teams as the buzzer sounds to end the third quarter here now. It was one shot from Grady Thompson that bounced off the rim, but uh, Monticello losing to Enterprise and San Juan down now as we head into the fourth quarter of play, down 74-56 to Manti. So they will have their hands full, down by, let's see, what is that? That is uh, 18. 18, yeah, so it is a pretty big deficit headed into the fourth quarter, but we do want to thank a lot of our sponsors who are making these broadcasts possible, not only this afternoon, but all season long as we've been covering sports from the football season on. And we would like to say thanks to San Juan Credit Union, serving residents of San Juan County since 1963. They have branches in Bluff, Blanding, and Monticello, offering exceptional financial products in a caring environment. Also this afternoon, Blue Mountain Chiropractic. Dr. Rhett Mon has been serving our schools and communities for more than 25 years with offices in Blanding, Monticello, and Moab. The Hideout Golf Course. Golf Week names the Hideout one of the top two courses in Utah. Burton Orthodontics, serving patients throughout the Four Corners area. You can call them at 970-243-6455. The San Juan Record, proud to cover local sports on Red Rock 92, sjrnews.com, and in the San Juan Record. And Red's Ace Hardware, serving the community since 1909 for all your grill, hardware, home improvement, lawn and garden, and tool needs. So set, set to go here in the fourth quarter. Manti has the basketball to start us off. Considering the Broncos game yesterday, I think San Juan has Manti right where they want him. <laughs> Absolutely. Down by 18 starting the fourth wow. quarter. Wow, is this going to count? I think that was a foul on the floor. They'll wave the shot, maybe. We'll see. There's a foul on Jensen Grover on the floor here to start the uh, fourth quarter. Foul on San Juan. So that is Sam Juan's fourth now in the half. And the Broncos will steal it away here as Manti tried to inbound. And Jensen Grover, nice job to the right of the basket to take a pass from Lad Ivins and roll that one in over the rim. And just like you said, Bill, uh, Sam Juan starts exactly where they want as they have Manti right where they want him. That's two of 18 that they need. But they're going to be guilty of a foul right here as Jaden Black commits the infraction. His first of the afternoon and San Juan's fifth now in the second half. We are just underway in the fourth quarter. 7.20 remaining in the ball game with San Juan trailing Manti 74-58. There's a drive to the baseline, but having the shot blocked was Braden Bogus. And San Juan in transition, a Jaden Black three, nothing but net. And he's up to eight, and that's five of the 18 points they need. 74 to 61, and still 6.55 to go in the game. Here's Grady Thompson driving, can't get the shot to fall. Manti, for the moment, gets their own rebound, and now they will keep it, kick it out for three, no. And 
they'll kick it out again on another rebound. No, again on the three. This is the first time they've missed back-to-back -back threes all game, I believe. So they missed three straight shots right there, and San Juan will have a chance to make this a 10-point uh, ball game here if they could get a three on this possession. It looks like we're going to get a timeout on the floor here with 6.39 to go in the game. And San Juan with a little bit of fourth quarter momentum again, 74 to 61 now. We are brought to you this afternoon on Red Rock 92 and picture at Palmer.com.